All righty, folks. Here we go. What else do we got up next? These stories kind of go together, but this is just what we're what we mean by getting the right guy, getting the right fit. Fit is everything, folks. Fit is everything because now these teams that have been struggling a little bit these last couple of seasons, they are primed and ready to go, and everybody's gushing, and we're hearing stories every single day, uh, praising the new regime, the new players, the new players, the new coaches inside this organization. So let's start with this one. Justin Jefferson excited for Kevin O'Connell's quote-unquote laid-back coaching style in Minnesota. Now, uh, once again, once again, there's exceptions to every single rule out here. We get it. But for the most part, you've got to be offensive-minded. Once again, just a different mindset between offense and defense, folks. There are two totally different mindsets. Defense, it's all about grit and grind. And, you know, the job is never finished. And there's no funny business going on. And there's no smiling. Get up and get ready for the next hit. you got to get ready to run into Derrick Henry as he's coming at you 20 miles an hour. You must find that. That kind of energy to go and tackle that, to want to go and tackle that, to go and tackle that and pound him into the ground, to tackle that man so hard he fumbles the ball. You need to create your own energy on defense. It's not all sunshines and rainbows on defense. It's grit and grind. It's hard. It's blood. It's sweat. It's tears. It's kind of a little bit of no fun. Stern, mean coaching. You've got to get right to go out and knock the other guy on his ass. Just like UFC fighters. You don't want to mess with any UFC fighter they're all business they're all because they have to go and punch each other in the face and you only one person's leaving that cage y'all will leave both alive but one's gonna be a winner and you know how you win you knock the other one out you make the other one submit or you just pummel each other for uh what do we got 15 minutes five three or three five minute rounds Unless it's championship, then what, five? So we're talking about 15 to 25 minutes of straight up beating each other's ass. And then if we don't have a winner, well, I mean, we can't really do more because if we keep going, I mean, y'all will just literally just either collapse from exhaustion or somebody's going to die in here. Uh, which is, you know, we can't really do that because it's, it's a sport. We can't really duel to the death. That's defense mentality. Offense mentality, yes, you know, you steal a little bit of that, you know, no nonsense, grit and all that. But offense, uh, you know, having that celebration, the touchdown celebration, the big plays, the finesse of the game, quarterbacks not getting hurt, not wanting to get sacked, wide receiver. You know, once again, a little bit of, you know, diva mentality a little bit. Once again, they're the celebrities of the league. Everybody wants to be offense. Everybody wants to be in the spotlight. Everybody wants to be in the limelight. Everybody wants to get the attention and all that. That's a little bit more offense and for a coach who has to manage both you know the kind of little bit more celebration style offense to the more down and dirty defensive style the head coach needs to find that fine balance between both but the problem when you go straight defense that's all they know is straight defense and they treat the offense and defense like straight defense where when you get an offensive minded coach they know the, the they know the side of the offense they also know how to motivate so they take care of that defensive portion that is needed to be had taken care of at that head coaching position. So once again, why we need offensive guys, offensive minded guys at the head coaching position. Now we go from this Vikings team with Mike Zimmer, defensive guy, to Kevin O'Connell, offensive guy. And Justin Jefferson calls it, quote unquote, a laid back offense, laid back coaching style. But that's kind of what offense needs to be to a T. You know, obviously you can't go overboard. Obviously there's always exception to the rule. But for, you know, just a general consensus, a little bit of laid back. Hey, we'll get it done. Hey, we just got to practice these throws. That's all we're doing here, offensively practice. Practicing the throw, one-on-one, -on -one, against the corner. Here, throw the ball. All right, get back. Let's run it again. Defense, the drills, Oklahoma. All right, get on your back. Get up and move the first one to get up and knock the other one over. Run the other one's asses over. That's the winner. That's defense practice. Smash mouth. Offense, hey, get it. Get, float it a little bit above. Yep, yep. Lay it out a little bit more. Go 15 yards deep this time instead of 10. That's offensive practice. Once again, yes, offense practices. With, once again, I understand everything, folks. Don't come at me with one example. Be like, well, what happens when the offense goes against defense live action? Then, yeah, of course, of course. But we're talking about the overall generalization a little bit. So, back to the article here. 
Justin Jefferson excited for Kevin O'Connell's laid back coaching style in Minnesota. Do not get this twisted. Well, oh my God, they're having fun. It's laid back. They're not worried about winning. They're not trying to win. That's not what this is, folks. Stop. I mean, everybody, I mean, remember, I, I this, this discussion, this, uh, yeah, this discussion always gets brought up, but this was kind of in the forefront. I want to say, uh, what was it? Like five, six years ago. When, like, a Patriots player came out and said, I'd rather, you know, not have fun and win rings. Or a, a player came out and said, I'd rather, you know, have fun in practice and win rings or something like that. And the media ran with that. Oh, you can't have fun and win rings. This is the NFL. No fun. You can't have fun while winning. This is sports. It's a competition. You're going against each other. Small, full, smash mouth football. You can't have fun in that sense. Well, yeah, you kind of can. You kind of can't take the both with the bad. But overall, there was like a stretch where the national media was just drilling in. No fun. You can't have fun out of the football field. If you want to win, you can't have fun. Folks, at the end of the day, this is a sport. This is a little bit of a job. Do you have fun at your job here and there? Yes, it's all business. Yes, it's work. But yes, you goof around a little bit here and there. That doesn't mean that that's what happens 24-7 at your job. You had a joke for 20 minutes. You goofed around for 20 minutes in practice. Uh, you goofed around 20 minutes at work. Yes, folks, you can have a little bit of fun in practice. It doesn't need to be kind of like a prison where, all right, this and this and you do as I say and you're going in the brink if you talk back to me to the lead or to the warden of the prison, everything like that. You can have both, folks. But let's get back in this article and see what Justin Jefferson is saying here of why he's excited and see, is this going to be a healthy mix of fun, laid-backness, and grit, and grind? Or maybe are we wrong? Is this truly just a circus? Is this Chuck E. Cheese over there in Minnesota? Let's see what Justin Jefferson is saying. Here we go. Let's uh, read the first, lead up to the first quote. Here we go. At the... Nascent stages of his tenure. Nascent? Nascent. Let's look up this word. I don't know what this word means. I'm using context clues to assume it means early. Uh, but let's truly see what this means. What does this mean? Nascent. I got to get the pronunciation. Nascent? Nascent. Nascent. All right, love it. Yeah, and this Google, Google's so great, folks. Y'all know about Google? Oh, my goodness. You can find anything on Google. And you can hear them say the word. I can hear this computer AI bot say this word. Nascent. Woo, I said nascent. Who am I? I'm a clown. I, I'm not a, I'm a human, not the machines. Once again, machines are the future, folks. Nascent. Love it. All right, here we go. Nascent. Just coming into existence and beginning to display signs of future potential. Ooh, I love it. Displaying signs of future potential. Nascent. Yes. Absolute great word. And this is coming from Kevin Patcher, folks. So, he, you know, you know, we, we've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kevin Patcher in the past. But overall, great guy, great writer. Great word. Nascent. Love it. Back to the article. Here we go. At the nascent stages of his tenure, new Minnesota Vikings coach Kevin O'Connell has already won over key members of the locker room, which is absolutely fantastic. Quote here by Justin Jefferson says, quote, just for him to come in and be a laid back coach ready to change the whole program and get us back to that winning stage. We're all excited. We've seen so many new faces in here. So many new coaches. We have so much potential on this team. We're all ready to get this thing started back up. So once again, he's just saying kind of laid back guy, not coming in uptight. Hey, you're going to follow this rule. Here's the schedule to a T. We will be here um, right on time every single day, blah, blah, blah. Um, and if not, then it's my way or the highway. No, no, no. All right, yeah. What, what's going on here? You know, how can we fix this? We're all adults in this room. Let's put our brains together. Let's put our minds together. We got the talent. I mean, we got the talent. That's no doubt. Let's put it all together here. And now it's infectious, and you're getting everybody buying in. Fantastic. Here we go. Next lead up to the quote. Jefferson describing O'Connell as quote-unquote laid back stands in stark contrast to past coach Mike Zimmer's rigid Oster style as with most coaches as with most as with most coaching hires the Vikings went from one extreme to the other and once again what extreme is potentially working what extreme is getting the players juiced up the offensive extreme we've got to go offense folks I don't know how I, 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 are, are we done with this like is this not even like a, a, a debate anymore are we all on offensive now I don't think I've kind of re-followed up with y'all on really kind of since the season ended but are we all on the same page of offensive minded coaches at the head coaching position 
Or do we need to keep bringing up examples of why and why and why I'm talking about it every single day? I will. There's no short of examples out here. This is why we follow this kind of narrative and believe in this narrative because the information, the data that comes out every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year, every single generation, every single millennium, we know the same information. This is why we let the data drive our thinking, data drive our information, our takes, our talks, our show. It's all data driven. Back to the quote. <clears throat> Says quote by Justin Jefferson. Just him being close in age to us, he can connect with us more. He has that younger vibe, so you know he'll play music in the locker rooms, play music in meeting room before the meeting starts. All of that gets us into our comfort zone. It feels laid back coming back to work. It's just not all about business. It's about having fun, doing what we love do, uh, doing what we love to do and coming to focus. Exactly that. I love it. Folks, do you know what I do before I do the show? 10 straight minutes I blast music. Do you classify that as fun? Am I having fun? Yeah, I'm getting laid back. I'm getting loosened up for the show. Bringing the energy. That gets me into the zone. Music. Non-boomer thinking. Players like music. You can like music. You can listen to music and get ready for football at the same time. You can get into that mental space. You can play music at practice. You can let the players control the music at practice. What was it? The 49ers? They, uh, they came out to Super Gremlin. By Kodak Black, I don't love the song, but they loved it, and they carried a boombox. I want to say this was in the playoff game. Am I right on that? First playoff game? They carry out a boombox, blasting Kodak Black's Super Gremlin out from the tunnel to the field, carrying a giant boombox. Is that having fun? Yes. Is that getting your players right to play because that energizes them? The players like that? Once again, you need to know how to respond to your players. Would they like some music playing? Yes, they have some music playing. What's, what, what does that hurt? No music. No music. Nope. We're not, we're not getting hyped up here. It's all business. I don't care how you get hyped up, but it won't be with that godforsaken music. No, no, no. It's like these players, they want this. This seems like a great uh, motivator to these players, and you're going to stop them from doing that? They're not going to want to play for you. They're not going to want to go to battle for you. Kevin O'Connell already relating. Hey, a little laid back. Still going to take care of business. But we're going to do it in this way. No more boomer way of, hey, no music, no fun, no smiling. Did you just smile? Take 20 laps. Who's smiling? Do you think football's fun? No football. Blah, blah, blah. Boomer thinking. Boomer thinking. I love it. I I'm loving it already, folks. Watch out for this Vikings team. Kirk Cousins is already good. I mean, they've got the infrastructure. Is this the Vikings year? Do we need to bet $10,000 on the Vikings? We just bet $10,000 on the Dolphins yesterday. Let's go here. What is the Vikings odds? We were going to make $310,000 on putting $10,000 on the Dolphins. Do we have to put another $10,000 on the Vikings? What is that going to pay us? Vikings to win the Super Bowl. Are they higher or lower odds than the Dolphins? Wow, look at this lower. Plus 4,000. Yes, sir. 10 grand pays $400,000, folks. I'm locking this in after the show. 10 grand on the Vikings to win $410,000. That's it. I'm all in on the Vikings now, and we haven't even completed the article. I do not care. They're getting it done. They've got all the talent, and they are offensive minded, and they are not boomer thinking, folks, over there. I am loving this. All right, let's keep going. We got, um, uh, let's keep going. We got maybe two, three more quotes. Here we go. Uh, next lead up, O'Connell's coaching style will win him points with a younger group of players. However, oh, now we're getting the other side. However, Kevin Patcher bringing out both sides. Let's see. However, it's his offensive acumen that could help turn the Vikes from a team that continually fell short in close games to a contender in the NFC. Is that however? I don't know. I think that's agreeing with the same point. I don't know if that's a true however. But he says, quote, there's a lot of different formations, moving guys around, putting guys in different spots. This is Adam Thielen now um, saying, quote, I think some of the route stuff is more player friendly, probably just to be able to kind of just go out there and feel the game, play the game. There's a lot more feel to it rather than you got to do this at this point at this time. 
Not to say that there, that's the, that there's a wrong way to do it. It's just different. Excited about that. Again, we haven't really talked about plays much. Just kind of starting the basics right now. Formations and just kind of some terminology stuff. But what I've seen... From afar, it's definitely an offense that kind of just lets their players do what they do well and go and try to beat the coverage that they're show that they're throwing at us. Try to make things look difficult to the defense, but easy for the offense. And I love that as well. <clears throat> you know, if I was a coach, offensive coach, I would even defensive coach, folks. I've th I've thought about defensive schemes all the time. Uh, I I would like to be a defensive coach. I would say it maybe at one point. Um, yeah, I, I could definitely potentially see that. See if I'd be good at it. I think I would. Uh, but either way. Uh, just kind of what, what did he say right here um right here um but, but, but. there's a lot of form different formation moving guys around putting guys in different spots i think some of the route stuff is more player friendly probably just to be able to kind of just go out there and feel the game play the game rather than you got to do this at this point playing off of natural instinct playing off of feel for the game i'm trying to come up with a new defensive scenario right now where i've got like eight players lined up maybe five yards off the line maybe even seven yards off the line and everybody's not even looking at the quarterback everybody's just looking at receivers seeing where they're gonna go jumping routes that you have instinctual I'm done with looking at the quarterback and I think that's what that would be one of my main defensive focuses maybe put it in like a package but I, I don't want players looking at the quarterback's eyes the quarterback can manipulate with the eyes we know this now this is in the mainstream once again we have to start upgrading and outside the box thinking on technique and what works and how you can beat an offense Stop looking at the eyes of the quarterback because now we get no look passes. Uh, you know, made famous by Patrick Mahomes. We saw Matthew Stafford no look pass all the time this year, teaching old dogs new tricks. Stop looking. Stop teaching the corners, the linebackers, the defensive players to watch the eyes of the quarterback. Watch the receivers. Play off of the receivers. Oh, receivers going in. Well, I'm gonna kind of go in as well. I'm gonna kind of block them off, but I'm focusing on the receiver. I'm not looking at anything with the quarterback. I'll see the ball. When somebody screams ball from the sideline, I'll look in the air. Is it coming to me? Coming in my direction? Is it coming to the receiver I'm playing? Is it coming to the zone that I feel like all these receivers are kind of playing for? Because we've done our due diligence. We know the route trees. We know how they're going to play. I'm done looking at the quarterback's eyes. I would not teach that at all if I was a defensive coordinator. I just would not. So, this kind of instinctual playing. Hey, make sure they're all on the same page, and that takes timing. You have to build the chemistry. You must build the trust in the locker room, and that, once again, plays back to the head coach, making sure everybody has that freedom of trust, not kind of, hey, you're doing it my way or no way, defensive mind and no fun. You've got to have that instinctual connection, quarterback, wide receiver, quarterback, running back, whatever it is, quarterback, tight end, whatever it is, making sure everybody's on that same page for the instinct for the instinct same thing goes for defense as well play off of what the receivers are doing not what the quarterback is showing you with his eyes I think we got to think outside the box in that now all right last thing one more quote let's see yes all right going back to Justin Jefferson final lead up to the final quote here here we go Playing in a similar offense to one that saw Cooper Cup win the receiving triple crown last season has Jefferson excited for what he could be in store for in 2022, says, quote, seeing what Cooper Cup did last year, him getting getting close to the receiving yards record, him being so open so many times, and absolutely that's always wide open, man, oh, man. There's a lot of things on film that I watched and looked at and I'm excited about this year. Even being in the meetings with him and him taking over schemes and different things he did with the Rams and things he's planning on doing with us, it's very exciting. I'm definitely excited for to start the season right now. They are chomping at the bit there in Minnesota for the season to begin, folks. I am loving this Vikings team, all starting with getting out Mike Zimmer and bringing in Kevin Connell. We told Told y'all folks this was the right hire. Kevin O'Connell, offensive minded, made Cooper Cup consistently monumental, folks. Consistently monumental. We use those words for a specific reason. Monumental, consistent, folks. What do we preach here on the show? Consistency and greatness. Consistent, monumental. Uh, does that not speak to what we celebrate here on the show? Shout out to Kevin O'Connell. Shout out to Cooper Cup. Love it all. And then we said, so Justin Jefferson should do the same. They're all chomping at the bit here. This was the right hire. The 
Vikings, folks. Put them on notice. Stop it with the Cowboys. Y'all are still trying to force the Cowboys on us. Stop it. The Vikings. The Vikings. There's other teams. We don't have to be bogged down by the, the, the media narrative driven teams. The Nets. Stop it with the Nets. There's other great teams. The Timberwolves. Did you just see what they did last night? Start praising the Timberwolves. We should be afraid of the Timberwolves, not the Nets. We should be afraid of the Vikings, not the Cowboys. Stop it. What the Cowboys? They're winning three games next year, folks. This is a team we should all be afraid of. I'm scared. I'm terrified of this Nets team. Scary hours happening here in Minnesota. I dropped $10,000 on them to win the Super Bowl. This is who I'm afraid of. Love it. Oh, I'm loving this Vikings team now. I think we're putting the Vikings on one of these canvases behind us, folks. We still got to get that all figured out. We know what the flag is doing. I already know what the flag is doing. These three canvases, though, these spots are up for grabs. And maybe we go Vikings, folks. A Vikings-based canvas. It's possible, folks. It's possible. They are in the running. Absolutely.